everybody, and welcome to Screen Wipe, a programme all about television. I'm Charlie Brooker, except I'm not, obviously. I'm Charlie Brooker, and I'll be your host for this short series, which basically consists of reviews of other TV programmes, features about the ghastly backside of television, and loads of other stuff which should hopefully prove just entertaining enough to stop you slashing your own throat open with a bit of old tin. Actually, that's our mission statement. Now, being a judgmental nincompoop, you've probably already decided whether you actually like me or not, even though I've only been on screen for 25 seconds. Of course, I haven't exactly helped things by calling you a nincompoop, uh, acting the smart-ass with that clapperboard there, and generally being a bit bloated and weird-looking. In fact, I'm probably well on my way to being the worst TV presenter you've ever seen. But then, what exactly is a TV presenter anyway, huh? TV presenters are basically imaginary friends and they come in four main types, the first of which is the chummy neighbour. Good morning to you coming up on the show today. Get your man all hot under... This is a non-threatening, cheery sort of person, often spotted during the daytime schedule, providing solace to the shattered and housebound. They smile a lot, they maintain eye contact and unlike real people, they seem to genuinely like you. Of course, that's an illusion. Why would they like you? They don't even know you. You could be sitting around jetting heroin into your eyeball, defacing a library book and drowning a kitten in a bucket for all Lorraine Kelly knows. She's still going to smile at you. Yes, it's obvious, but it's also incredibly easy to forget that no matter how hard they grin, no one on TV cares whether you live or die. As far as they're concerned, you're less significant than a smudge on a bathroom tile or, I don't know, half a sponge finger. Presenter type number two of the expert. Experts range from the erudite lecturer you wish you'd had at school to the approachable goon who knows shitloads about potatoes. And put them in their new home. One of the best TV experts ever was Dr Jacob Bronowski, who wrote and presented The Ascent of Man. Just watch how he delivers this next sequence. And from that moment, I was totally committed to thinking about what makes man what he is. In the scientific work that I've done since then, the literature that I've written, and in these programmes. Oh, it's like being cuddled by your granddad, isn't it? In a good way, I mean. He's simply overjoyed to be just telling you stuff, and he does so with a warm, quiet dignity. Exact and beautiful adaptation. For a measure of just how dignified Bronowski is, let's compare him with comedy youth presenter Justin Lee Collins. This is Lee Collins. I'm Justin Lee Collins, and my love is bigger than the ocean. Fuck on. And this is Bronowski. There are only six or seven essentially distinct skulls. Lee Collins. Gary Rhodes is spotted there. <laughs> Bronowski. Which is almost indistinguishable from the foot of modern man. I'm Lee so Collins. A searchlight into the history of man. One day someone's going to make a great road movie in which those two have to, I don't know, drive a van across Germany. Or at least they would if Bronowski wasn't dead and if Lee Collins was vaguely tolerable. In at number three, vapid eye candy. The sort of person you could be forgiven for thinking is only on the box because they look sort of nice. Prices seem to, prices seem to, pr- Can I just get in my hair? Can I just get in my hair? We can love Kelly Brown. Oh, yeah. Ah, lovely. But being a pretty televised puppet has to be the least meaningful job in the universe. Even the average toilet attendant does more to further the cause of mankind. Despite this, they're some of the most celebrated people in the country. It's like the world's gone mad! What's the smallest part of your own body you'd be prepared to cut off to win a picnic with Kate Thornton? Or be my arm. My little toe. Uh, probably my ears. My little finger. I think I'd have to um, give that picnic a miss. Finally, presenter type four, the vaguely ironic cheerleader. Hello, Check them out. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. No, they get upset if you call them monkeys. Knowing, witty, relaxed, urbane, just the sort of person you can imagine holding court at a dinner party. Go on, admit it. You'd love to be busy mates with them, wouldn't you? Hey, wouldn't you? Hey! Well, don't let your mind waste its breath. They're just a more sophisticated version of our first presenter type, the chummy neighbour. That's all. You fell for it. So, which kind of presenter am I going to be? Well, hopefully an all-new one, the incompetent, obnoxious misanthrope. 
or the bloated smart ass, depending on how you look at it. Hmm? I thought it was a dormio then, no? It is a Oh, these things freak me out. But you, you can't mix puppets and real food. It just it doesn't go. But there's more chunks on this plate. Shh, Papa. I mean, what have they got? Internal organs made of felt or something? Don't worry. When it is this. Oh, oh, it just makes me feel ill. Oh, no, I am not a boarding person at the best of times. Uh, I can remember the worst start I ever had to the day was when my doorbell rang at 7 o'clock in the morning. I opened it and there standing in the doorway was a tramp with a can of petrol in one hand and his penis in the other. But even that doesn't compare to the early morning horror that is the Jeremy Kyle show on ICV1. Life-changing results. That's the Jeremy Carl Show. Next. Typically cheery start of the show there, although it's not really fair to call it a show because it's more of a it's more of a distinguished public forum for civilized debate. Sorry, did I say civilized debate? Because what I actually meant to say was it's a non-stop bellowing festival in which a cast of people who resemble sort of aquatic livestock chart the outer limits of incomprehension. I'm fine with you. The ugliest thing I've ever seen. I wouldn't touch for bath pole. Anyway, so far, so Trisha. But the show's unique selling point is Jeremy himself, a man who's prepared to get far more stuck in than other less ominous talk show hosts might dare. I am not having language like that, and you both go off if it continues. That is the rule, OK? End of. Yeah, none of that. None of... Mm -mm. You listen to Jeremy. You listen good. Read that. <coughs> on national... Te you read it. Yeah, go on, read it. I want you to read it. No, I don't want to read it. I you want you to it. read it out. No, you read it. No, the you read it. Me. And then I want you to do a little bloody jig, OK? Woohoo! look at me. Sometimes he's good cop. This is a brave lady. Marina on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes he's bad cop. Do you honestly, do you, do you, you amoeba of a man, the only do you time... honestly believe that that is the right way to behave? Seriously. Answer me. Sometimes he's evangelical cop. They love you and she loves you and you want to buy into that because that is love and it is loyalty and it is concern and you want to use that and channel it to do something about your life because you can beat this, don't you think, ladies and gentlemen? And sometimes he's, well, he he's a bit like... This. Can you do me a favour? Yeah. Take those glasses off a minute. Okay. You're too beautiful. So traumatised and beautiful. You know what? Too intelligent and far too sweet for that, isn't that right? Let's it cry on me. Go further, sweetheart. I think you're beautiful. Oh, cry on it. Old enough to be your dad, sadly. Oh, f cry on it, bitch. I, I don't mean that as it sounds. Mm, you're so beautiful. Oh. But at least you can never accuse Jeremy Kyle of needlessly staring things up. You Fair must enough. be mightily glad you're not in this relationship anymore. Oh, I'm glad, mate. Why'd you sleep with him three weeks ago, then? There's a word for people like Jeremy Kyle. Sinister. I'm not saying Jeremy Kyle is Satan. I'm just saying you could easily cast him as Satan, especially if you wanted to save money on special effects.